I am Lars Bakken, multiplayer designer here at Bungie. I was a designer on Ghost Town. Uh, I'm Cameron Pinard. Uh, I was an artist on Ghost Town. And I'm Vic DeLeon, and I was an artist on Ghost Town. Why is Vic pink? That's the question. I'm Mr. Pink. <laughs> <laughs> the map itself is medium-sized, asymmetric map. Asymmetrical means there are no uh, similar portions of the map that are copied from one side to another. Did and you just look that up on Wikipedia? No, actually, uh, <laughs> yeah. Um, Professor so Vic. I Cameron, like I'm going to, you know, <laughs> shut and kill just for that. Come on, <laughs> jerk. Uh, the fiction on this map is it is a water reclamation plant that is on the outskirts of the jungle. At some point, there's this fictitious thing called a global water campaign that was supposedly uh, feeding the world from water. So occasionally you'll find a barrel. You know, I'm really thirsty, but I just can't seem to get anything out of these <laughs> Pretty much every area has got at least two ways in and two ways out. Yeah. But in this little back area was designed, you know, by the nature of the map. We, we kind of needed a, a safe place for people to spawn in when we were doing uh, one-way CTF. Vic and Cam did a really good job on this map. There's a lot of destruction and you just don't get hung up at all. It's really important in a multiplayer map that that does not happen. You're definitely going to get stuck on this thing. <laughs> I think this is my dad's computer. Yeah, it has switches. <laughs> <laughs> there definitely aren't the same weapons placed all over the map. They're more in unique locations. One side starts near the rocket launcher and the other side spawns near the shotgun. If you run in here, throw it on a power drain down into the center and brute shot the hell out of this area, it really makes it difficult to defend. Oh, oh, ow, snap. We don't want people to find places that are out of the way where they can sit with a sniper rifle and just take people out. We try and keep them out with this thing called a soft ceiling. Wee. There's uh, the grab lift down below, the power drainer, and the bubble shield, and they're all kind of centrally located. Wait, so. there's a grab lift in this map? Yeah, what? it's right here. <laughs> where? Doesn't right even where know I'm his own map. <laughs> Obviously, the forge allows you to place everything, so there's some pretty cool stuff here. We were looking for something kind of new and exciting to add. What we ended up coming up with was using uh, some of our underutilized system, doing basically HDR adjustment. So we can do things with uh, screen effects now. This allows them to put a screen effect over the entire level um, so they can create their own version of Ghost Town that looks like super saturated like this one. Do the Gears of War one. Hey, we can't do all hey that. Now. We're beating that one out. <laughs> we have the very simple uh, color blind. Black and white. Old tiny. Oh, which has a, a little it's bit of a like filmic effect. With watching it. a Charlie dun, Chaplin dun, movie. Dun, 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 dun. If you guys enjoy the map, uh, we've had a lot of fun making it and playing on it and testing it and all that. Send all feedback to Vic Dillion. <laughs>
Spartan Laser is, is a big rush at the beginning of the game. It's right at the exit of the ice cave under the, the large Forerunner arch. Bealtman's like talking about gameplay and stuff. <laughs> We're just throwing like warthogs into the man cannon. I mean, that's kind of how the development went. We goofed around while Bealtman did all the hard work. <laughs> Basically. <laughs> true that, true that. <laughs> Look how awesome the ice is. It's there, it's just a little less slippery because the Warthog has better traction generally. Yeah, it's got upgraded tires. No tires. Yeah, because it is great. the Snow Hog. It, it is the Snow Hog. It has chains. No tire. It does not have chains. It well, doesn't? It's studded, tire. Oh, sorry, studded <laughs> tires. So there's like uh, snow camo versions of all the vehicles. The Covenant ones do not. I think the uh, Covenant are too cool to do snow camo. Sussman did make a lot of new forge objects for this. He did? Let's uh, see him. What all right, so one of the new forge objects is a little sniper tower, uh, along with the ramp. Now there's some energy doors to block off certain oh, areas yeah. of the map. Let's place one of those. I placed two, but... I know, but not in any kind of <laughs> good place. I'm going to take the door. Yeah, you block that. I'll block this door. Come play with my ramp, guys. Check it out. And it fits just like that. Memory uh, was yeah rough for the artist because we have so many vehicles and we wanted a lot of options in Forge so people could do whatever they wanted. But the more uh, objects you get in there, the less uh, texture space there is for artists. Those guys did a really good job. It turned out re looking really good. Especially if you turn this filter on. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Dan Miller. I'm a mission designer at Bungie. I'm uh, Blake Lowe. I uh, did some finishing art for Blackout. I'm Paul Russell! This is Blackout. This is the uh, port from the Halo 2 lockout. When I first started working on it, the original designer, Francois, came on and actually did all the weapon placement, and then he got called off to do some top secret things, so I kind of picked it up. Can we talk about his top secret stuff? No, can't. Okay. All the weapons, guns, more or less, are the same. Same with the sword, same spot. We put the bubble shield near the sniper rifle, and the reasoning was that the player cannot use the sniper rifle with the bubble shield. It's kind of one of those things that you're going to use the bubble shield for uh, this middle area to prevent from a lot of grenade spams. You try to add variations and just making it a better Halo, but to actually say, hey, we're going to make this game about, I don't know, Paul Russell, think of a good genre. We can't make a Western. A, we can't make it a Western. It's, it's his fans. He has tons of them always calling. Hello? Hi. <laughs> no, we're recording some audio for a, for a video documentary right now. Every part of the map has no equal on the opposite end of the map. Primary game play type, in my opinion, is Flare. Yeah, they're recording everything we're saying right now. Yeah, okay, Bob. I love you. Love you, Bob. Bye. I, I died in my pink uniform. I assassinated um, you. <laughs> Did anybody see the windsock? No. The windsock and wind cup. Oh, weather station Z41. In the original lockout, the structure itself was pushed into the ice. Yeah. Why did it get pulled out of it? Embedding a oil rig or whatever in the ice just didn't seem to make much sense to me. Plus, it was just another one of those things you could piss the people off who wanted a direct port. Thank you. Oh man, I wish we could fire up Forge. There's some cool stuff in here. We can? Oh, is that you? Oh, hi, Blow. Hi. Hi. I try to grab all the stuff from what we placed in Foundry. So in theory, you can actually make your own walkways. If you have two people, you can build on top of things and then remove it so you have floating platforms. Oh, is that how that works? Yay. Oh, okay. It's cool. Either of you guys work with Forge? Uh, dumb question. No. But, uh, What's you can... Forge? <laughs> We also have these doors that actually fit with the motif. Oh. So we'll just lock that door off. You can close every room. You can close every door if you want. Sounds like fun. It's interesting to see how things play out with a couple doors locked off. I'm really excited to see how people are going to play this map. Yeah, it'll be great. Go buy a legendary pack. Don't get too mad at us for f***ing things up. <laughs>